understands right now, all right? We're going to change that up while I'm up here. So I'm going to say go Terps, Terps. all right? I went to the University of Maryland, so we're going to say go Terps. Then we're going to get a clown, ready? Go Terps! Go Terps! All right, that's better. I feel at home now, all right? I'm going home. Uh, I just wanted to come out here and share a few things with you guys. First of all, I want you guys to give a big round of applause to your parents who got you out here. Guys, your parents are important, you know, they, they got you guys up, they got you out here, they got you fed, they got you dressed, all right, they've been invested in you guys' future, okay, they've taken the time to invest something in your future, you guys have goals and dreams, you guys want to be professional athletes in whatever sport you choose to go, all right, and they're behind you 100% or she wouldn't be here, all right, they've taken the time out of their busy schedules to get you out here, all right. Second, I want you guys to recognize these coaches, all right? And a round of applause for the coaches. All right, these coaches are like teachers, man. They're, they're the most important people in the world, okay? The most important people in the world. And this applies to when you go to school, too. There's a ton of professions that people can go into when they graduate college or go on in life, all right, that can make a ton of money, more money than being a coach, or a teacher, but what these guys do are trying to help you grow up and be a well-rounded young men and young women. So they, they really deserve all the credit in the world, all right, for dedicating their time uh, and effort and energy to come out here and teach you guys uh, speed, sports, and just how to be good men and young women, okay? I wanted to start off by just telling you a little bit about myself. Uh, of course, you know, uh, come to introduce me, my name is Al Wallace. I originally grew up in South Florida, playing every sport under the sun in South Florida, literally. Uh, football, baseball, soccer, swimming, uh, everything. You know, I was an active outdoor kid. I encourage you guys to stay active and stay outdoors. It was easier for me. I didn't grow up with a PlayStation and an Xbox and all the, the things you guys have to distract you and the internet. Uh, it sounds really old not to have the internet, but we didn't have the internet, all right, that you guys can do. And we know you guys, uh, you know, have a lot of distractions. And third, give yourselves a round of applause for coming out here, all right? There's a ton of things you guys could have done this week. It would be easy to sit by the pool or hang out with your buddies or hang out in your room and do absolutely nothing. It's the summertime, all right? You guys are on break from school, most of you. Uh, hopefully, and there's a ton of things you can do. For you guys to get up every morning this week and dedicate yourself to getting better, not only as an athlete, but as a person, because trust me, the things you're learning out here, the toughness you're learning out here, how to persevere out here, you're gonna be able to take that out in the real world for the rest of your life, all right? So I grew up, uh, didn't want to play football, believe that or not, hated it. I was a scary, scary little kid. Didn't want to play football, was too rough. I wanted to play baseball, I was pretty good at baseball. Uh, my mother, uh, she said that you're gonna grow up, you're gonna play football, but you're gonna grow up and you're gonna buy me a house and make the entire work. I think I was, I was eight years old at the time, okay? <laughs> so at eight years old, just like I told you about your parents, they invest, they're investing time in your future, all right? She saw something in me, and coaches saw something in me, uh, and I went to practice and I would sneak off behind the trees when she pulled off and my mom changed her work schedule so she can sit out every day and make sure that I was dedicated to football. And so that was her gift to me and my gift to her a few years later was to buy her that house that she promised me I would buy. <laughs> I didn't promise her, she told me. All right. So I grew up, uh, I played running back, I played tailback, I was a small guy my senior year in high school. I was a receiver. I was about 6'2", about 180 pounds. Didn't get uh, recruited by a lot of schools, maybe one or two schools in Florida. I uh, got recruited by the University of Maryland, and the reason why I chose Maryland uh, is because it was a lot of things. I grew up in Delray Beach, Florida. There was a lot of trouble down there. A lot of stuff that I was mainly for. My cousins, my buddies were getting into a lot of the wrong things. Use your own imagination of what those things were, right? Not good choices, not good decisions. So I decided with my parents to send me to the furthest school away from South Florida, Delray Beach, Florida, to get away from those things, to give myself the best opportunity in life to succeed. So I chose that trip. 
Um, like I told you, I got recruited as a receiver. I went to Maryland as a receiver. Uh, the person you see standing in front of you obviously is not a receiver. I don't look like Steve Smith. I've never looked like Steve Smith. I got there and I grew. I had a growth spread. By the time I came home from August to Christmas break uh, in December, I had grown three inches and I gained 45 pounds. Now, a lot of that is just God-given genetics, all right? But a lot of that is also hard work. All right, when I got switched from offense to defense and I got my bell rung a couple times, I got knocked around. That's what happens in football and any other sport. You get to a higher level, you're not going to be the big dog anymore, all right? You're going to be back to the small fish in the pond. And you got two choices, all right? You can accept your lot in life. I'm just a small guy. That's what it is. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to put every ounce of energy that I have in myself into being the best that I can be, the best that I can be. I can't be the best Tremaine Stevens. I can only be the best Al Wallace. So that's what I decided. I went in the weight room. I made sure I put the right stuff in my body. I didn't eat all that junk food and stuff that's going to slow me down, sodas. All right? And I grew. Three inches, 45 pounds. When I got home, that same mom I talked about walked through the door. And she burst into tears. She didn't even recognize who I was. I was a when I tell you a completely different person, I was a completely different person. I didn't have any clothes. My feet grew two inches. And none of my shoes fit. I wore the University of Maryland issue gear for an entire semester because I didn't have it. Right? That first semester also, what I didn't tell my mom is when I got home, I flunked out of school. I completely flunked out of the University of Maryland. I had four classes to take, all right? Four 50-minute classes to take week. And I got two F's and two D's. All right? Two F's and two D's. Not because I wasn't a smart kid. All right? Not because school was too hard for me. Because I just didn't care enough. Just didn't want to do it. I got there. You're on your own. You get to make decisions for yourself. And I flunked out of college. Failed. All right? Failed. So I had to write a letter uh, to the university begging and pleading, basically, to get back into the University of Maryland. Well, they were gracious enough to give me a second chance. They gave me a second chance at that, um, and I was able to get back in. Now, I was ineligible for spring football, couldn't play. I had to sit in the building, over the practice field, and watch all my buddies, watch the entire team practice and get ready for the upcoming season. Something that uh, you dream about. You want to be out there. You know how it is sit on the sideline and watch your friend. <clears throat> the lesson I learned from that, guys, and the lesson I want you guys to know is that school is more important than anything you do out of one of these fields. It's more important than any of that stuff. Because without that, whatever you think you want to do, you will not be able to do it. It's just not going to happen. That's the reality of the situation. That's what I'm here to tell you, okay? What you do in that classroom with those teachers and what they're trying to tell you, if you don't apply that, it's never going to happen for you. I don't care what kind of football player, or what kind of soccer player, or baseball player, or track athlete you think you are. You'll be sitting in somebody's building or on your couch at home, all right, watching your buddies who dedicated themselves in the classroom participate in sports. You can't have that. Well, at that point, I decided to get my life together. And from there on, um, I made the dean's list every semester. All right, I was an honor student when I graduated. I was named two-time uh, academic all-ACC football player at the University of Maryland. All right, and that award was more important to me than anything that, that any sack, any interception, all right, anything that I've done on the field. All right, those records are broken now. All those things have gone away at the University of Maryland. I just went back, my weight room, my bench press record, off the wall. All right, somebody broke it. All right, 40 time for a defensive end off the wall, it's gone, somebody broke it. But the one plaque that's still on the wall, all right, is my plaque for being a two-time all-ACC academic performer at the University of Maryland. It's important, guys. And I know we're out here at a sports camp, and that's great, but it's not more important. Not to me, I'm positive not to the parents, and it shouldn't be to you, all right? So from there, I got an opportunity, uh, didn't get drafted, didn't go to the combine. A lot of you guys know what that is. Um, but I signed as an undrafted free agent uh, for 
the Jacksonville Jaguars, 1997. And that was fine with me. You know, that was just fine with me. I wasn't a high draft pick. I didn't get to walk across the stage and shake anybody's hand. I wasn't in the green room in the back. But a lot of guys, all you need is an opportunity. That's all you need. That's all I wanted. All right? All you guys aren't going to be the best on your team or in your sport or at this camp. But you have an opportunity to get better every day. And it's what you choose to do with the guys that's going to be the most important. And it's up to you. There's nothing a coach can tell you, all right, that's going to help you in here. All right? Heart. Whether you want it bad enough. You don't have to be the biggest. I wasn't in high school. It doesn't have, you don't have to be the strongest. I played six years for the Panthers. Julius Peppers was obviously the best defensive end we had, all right? Mike Rucker was probably the second best guy we had, all right? Maybe I was the third best, and that's fine with me, all right? But what none of those guys can do that I did, and I'm not not, I'll tell them to their face, and they know for a fact nobody out there decided to work harder than me. I wasn't the best, guys. You're not going to be the best, and you don't have to be. You don't have to be the best. What you do have to do is work harder than anybody. Now, my story applies to football, but that could be in the classroom. That could be on the track field, baseball. Outwork everybody. And as a coach, I coach high school football. Uh, these guys coach, they'll tell you, they'll take a team full of guys who are willing to put in the effort and the work over a guy with the most talent and just doesn't know what to do with it, all right? So continue to work. Well, I ended up playing 10 years in the NFL. Played with the Jaguars, the Eagles, played a year in Chicago with the Bears, and uh, finished up here with the Panthers. Went to the Super Bowl with those guys. Played with DeLone and Steve and Peppers and all those guys. Had a great experience, guys. And from where I was able to come from in my life, from Delray Beach, Florida, I looked up one day and I saw my name on the locker, all right? in Reliant Stadium in Houston, Texas, getting ready to go out there and face Tom Brady. You can't ask for anything more. All right? That's my story. Uh, that's who I am. That's what uh, I was able to accomplish through hard work, through dedication, all right? and flat out just wanting more than anybody else. And I'm here to tell you guys, whatever it is that you choose to do, it may not be athletics. All right? The harsh reality is that it probably won't be athletics. But what you do out here is important. It's teaching you life lessons that are going to apply at, in your business. Some guys are going to run business. Some of you guys are going to own teams instead of playing for the team. All right? Somebody's going to own a, a pro franchise, and that's great. All right? Everybody's uh, path in life isn't the same as mine. You're not going to be a pro football player. You're not going to go to a Super Bowl. All right? But you can be a champion. All right? Champions come in more ways than one. It doesn't always apply to sports, all right? You guys decide right now, all right, like I did at eight or nine years old, that you want to be a champion. Whether it's your parents pushing you and motivating you, uh, whether it's your coaches pushing you and motivating you, all right, or it's something you heard today, decide to be a champion now. Don't wait till you're in high school and decide, all right? And it may change, guys. Don't be afraid to change. That's the great thing about the world. There's so many opportunities out there for you guys to have and do and accomplish, all right? Don't be afraid to chase those things. Don't be afraid to chase those dreams, all right? Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is actually not something that I came up with on myself, up for myself. Like Coach Steven said, I met him. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Chris Candy is, uh, another great pro athlete from the Charlotte area, went to Charlotte Lang. He has a camp every year. Uh, he's a Super Bowl champion with the Giants now, if you guys didn't know. And he brought in somebody to speak to the kids uh, a couple months ago when I was there. And his name is Mike Newsom. I think his name is Mike Newsom, first name. But Coach Newsom was a former coach at Butler High School, if any of you guys are familiar with Butler High School. He won a couple state championships. He's moved on now, and he's over at Dale Brown in Canapolis, all right? And he spoke to the kids about, I think it was the four F's of football, okay? I'm going to apply it to football. You guys can apply it to whatever sport you play in, whatever you do. And there were four things that just touched me so much about everything that he spoke about. After we talked, after he finished speaking, I walked up to him. I said, hey, I speak to a lot of kids. I go out 
Would you mind if I use this? I think it's an important message for everybody to be able to hear. He said, sure. That's the whole point. Somebody teaches you something, you pass it on. You don't keep it for yourself. That's how everybody helps one another, all right? So the first thing he talked about, all right, out of those four things was faith. All right? Faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. All right? That's important. That's the most important. That's the first one I put out there, all right? No matter who and what you believe in, I'm not here to preach to you and tell you who to believe in and what, what to believe in, but you have to have some faith in your life, okay? There's something out there greater than us. Whatever you believe it might be, all right? Hold on to that, all right? Believe in that. When you wake up in the morning, be thankful every day for every breath you have, for your parents, for the breakfast you're going to eat, for the clothes on your back, for everything that you have, all right? Have faith. That's very important. And with that, these other things that I'm going to talk about fall right in line easily, all right? Have faith. The second thing is family, all right? We talked a lot about it. I'm a big family guy, okay? I don't have any little boys. I have two little girls, 11 and 7, okay? They're not into sports, so... You know, I enjoy coming out here and watching you guys out there and the way you work and the way you, you fought through that last drill that I was able to see. All right, family. Now, everybody's family makeup is different, right? The people you are here right now, these coaches and teachers, they all make up family, all right? It's all these adults around you, all your brothers that you come out here and work with that are teaching you something, that are helping you through life, that are helping you be the best person you could possibly be. All right, so everybody say family. Family. All right? We have faith and we have family, all right? First two things are important. With your faith and your family, nothing else can go wrong in your life. You'll be okay. You'll be able to overcome a lot of obstacles that you guys are sure to face, okay? And this third one, all right, falls in there after those two, all right? For me, all right, the third F is football, okay? Apply whatever sport you play or want to put in there, all right? Football. If you're going to play football, you have to be committed to it. It has to be right up there behind your faith and your family, okay? It's important. So that means you have to do the right things. You have to eat the right things. You have to dedicate your time to the game or the sport, whatever you do, like you've done this week, like you'll continue to do. Train, work hard, prepare yourselves, all right? Do what you're supposed to do in school, all right, and, and, and be faithful, to your football. Be committed to it, all right? If you're going to play something, if you're going to do it, you can't be half in. You can't want to go to practice one day, all right, and the next day you'd rather stay home and play Call of Duty or Madden or something like that. It's just not going to work. You're not going to be successful. Nobody who's been successful has done something 50% of the time or 80% of the time. Even the best, guys, trust me, it does not work out like that, all right? Commit yourself to football. Commit yourself to track. Commit yourself to baseball, whatever it is, okay? And that's going to take extra work. Coaches only allowed to have you out here, you know, a couple hours a day, or at school or after school. It's only a couple hours. You know what I did? I ran in the middle of the street. I practiced on my cuts. I had my, I have four sisters. I didn't have, even have brothers. I made my sisters throw me a football every day, maybe a hundred balls a day, so I could catch them. Because I dropped a touchdown pass when I was in high school. All right. I was committed to it. I was all in. I decided I was going to play football. You have to do everything it takes. All right? So everybody, what do we have? Faith. Say faith. Faith. All right? We have family. Family. All right? We have football. Football. All right? And, and the last thing here, all right, is focus. All right? When you have all those other Fs in front of you, all those th other three things, all right, you have to have supreme focus, and it's what I just talked about, all right? You have to be dedicated to the game. You have to know it. It's more mental than it is physical, guys. Trust me. That playbook I should have brought out of my truck is about this thick. Those guys are getting ready to go to the Spartanburg, all right? There's so much stuff in there. It's more stuff than you ever thought of in any of your school books, all right? But you have to know how to process it. You have to be smart enough. You have to be dedicated to your craft craft, okay? Be focused, okay, on whatever you're doing. When it's time to be uh, in school, all right, you can't think about football, then you got to focus on that classroom work, all right? When you're with your parents and you're doing chores, be focused on that. Don't be thinking about who the Panthers are playing this week and if Cam is going to run for three touchdowns. Listen to your parents, all right? 
be focused. All right? All four of those things are vital and key to success in whatever you want to do. Apply those things, guys, to anything in life. And the last one I'm going to add for myself, all right, is because of what I just saw out on that field. And that's finish. I watched you guys finish. It's hot. You guys are tired. It's been a long week. But I watched all you guys finish. All right? And all you guys did a great job. All right? But there's one guy that I watched, and maybe because he was closer to me, that I watched finish. All you guys finished. I didn't see anybody pull up. But this young man right here, what is your name? Mason. This guy finished. Whoever was on his team was lucky. All right? Is he the fastest kid out here? Probably no. not. Is he the tallest kid out here? Probably not. Is he as good looking as me? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> all right? But this guy finished, all right? Because that's how you do it. You finish. Whatever you're doing in life, finish it, guys. Be dedicated to it, all right? Start fast and finish even stronger, all right? I hope you guys so much success out there in whatever it is you decide to do. I appreciate you coming out here and giving your time to coach and your parents, all right? And being dedicated to it. Stay with it. Make goals. Chase them hard. All right, and finish strong. All right, thank you guys for your time. train hard, to make sure that I ate the right things, to make sure that I studied hard, to make sure that I did all of the right things, because I had to face guys this size every single Sunday. Okay, I'm not, I look in the mirror and I say, wow, I'm a pretty big guy, until Al walks up. <laughs> I realize I'm not, okay? But guys are his size and bigger, and they're just as fast, just as strong. This thing is much bigger than Charlotte, North Carolina. It's bigger than the state of North Carolina. Okay? You are having to compete against athletes from all over. So it takes a little bit extra. Just like Al said, I thought that was perfect. When you get done with your practice, there is some kid somewhere who's doing something extra. You want to be great. And just do the regular. And do a little something extra. Al, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> faith, faith, family, your football, baseball, track, basketball, soccer. We'll make it three F's and whatever, B, S, whatever you want to call it. Um, focus and finish. Is the word that our coaches have been saying all week now. That's crazy because you didn't know that. But our whole thing all week was finish. Finish. When you're tired, finish. When it's hot, finish. When you don't want to do anymore, finish. You have a greater sense of accomplishment when you finish. Okay? Everybody did great. What we want to do now is kind of hand out a couple of things.